Plugins in Sublime can seem a little daunting when you're new to it, but once you get a little experience under your belt, it's not that complicated at all. Now, when it comes to plugins in Sublime, there are very defined rules that govern when plugins are loaded, when they're unloaded, and what they can do in between those two times. So for our first steps into plugin development in Sublime Text, let's take a peek at the Sublime Text plugin lifecycle. <music> Hello, fellow Sublime Text fanatics. Odat Nerd here. Welcome back to Plugin 101, where the topic this week is the plugin life cycle in Sublime Text. What exactly is the plugin life cycle? Well, simply put, this is uh, a way for us to know as plugin authors whether our plugin has just been loaded or is about to be unloaded. This isn't something that you always need to know. Uh, because not all plugins require something like that. If you're just defining commands to be executed or events to react to certain things that are happening, then this is probably not something you generally need most of the time. However, you can run into cases where you want to know when your plugin is loading so that you can set up some structure, uh, for example, load a configuration file for your commands to use and things of that nature. And you might want to know when your plugin is going away for similar reasons to be able to clean up things that you did prior. And there are some other reasons we want to know about that as well. But first of all, let's jump in and create a new plugin so we can discuss exactly how plugins are loaded in the first place. So I'm going to create a new plugin here. And now this is defining a command named example. This is just the sample stub. And I'm going to go ahead and save this into my user package as lifecycle.py like so. Remember, it has to be in the root of a package and a Python file to be considered a plugin. And once I do that, if I look here, we can see it saying reloading plugin user lifecycle. And every time I save this file, it says it's reloading plugin user dot lifecycle because Sublime monitors plugins. Now it's not immediately visible here except for the fact that it's using the text reloading, but what Sublime is actually doing is literally taking this file and loading it again. It undoes what it did the first time and then does it a second time using the file. And when plugins load, what it's actually doing is executing the Python code because that's how Python works. Executing this, it defines the class example, and then later on, something could actually use that particular class. And of course, behind the scenes, the Sublime Text plugin system is actually examining that this class is an instance of a particular type of class. That's how it knows it's a command, but that's something we're going to talk about in a future video, so we're not going to go into it anymore here. But I could type print hello here like this, and now every time I save this, the console says hello. This code is being executed every time this happens. Now, if we wanted to know when our plugin is first being loaded, or when it's being loaded at any time after that, whenever a change has been made, we can use an optional module level function named plugin loaded like this. And this will get executed if it exists by Sublime after it's finished loading your plugin. It runs through all of this code. It does whatever the top level code did, like that, say that hello there, for example, and then it calls plugin loaded if it exists. So we could say, for example, print here, my plugin just loaded like so. And I'm going to save this file. When we go to the console, we can see it saying reloading plugin user.lifecycle. It noticed the file was changed. It says hello because it executed the code. And now that it's finished doing that, it has told us my plugin just loaded. So if you were writing a plugin and you needed to know when the plugin was loaded so that you could load a configuration file that your commands are going to be using or things of that nature, you can get access to that information by using this. And there's, of course, an analog to this if you wanted to know when your plugin is being unloaded from memory, we could use def plugin unloaded as well, uh, which is, you know, pretty obvious, I would think, based on the name of this thing. And we could say print here, my plugin just got unloaded like this. Now I'm going to save this. So we go into the console, we can see it saying reloading plugin user dot lifecycle. Hello, my plugin just loaded. It doesn't say the plugin just got unloaded. And that's because it unloads the plugin before it runs it again, and the version of this plugin as it existed before I saved the file didn't have that method in it, so it wasn't there to call. But if I was to run it again now, we can see it saying reloading plugin, then it says my plugin just got unloaded, 
And then once that's done, it loads the file again, runs it, it says hello, and then it says my plugin just loaded. So if you needed to know whether your plugin was just loaded or just unloaded, this is how you would do that. Now, when is plugin loaded executed? Plugin loaded will be executed when you create a file for the first time, as we just saw here. And it's also executed whenever a package that was previously ignored becomes unignored. For example, if you were to install a package via package control, the first thing it does is add the name of the package it's about to install to the list of ignored packages so that it can put it in place. And once it's done, it removes it from the list of ignored packages. Sublime notices it's there. It loads the plugin. Similarly, when is a plugin unloaded? It's unloaded when you modify the plugin file in some way and Sublime knows it needs to reload it. It tells you that it's going away before it loads it again which is what we just saw. And also when you add a uh, package to the list of ignored packages, it also unloads the plugin while at the same time it's removing augmentations to the menu and syntax definitions and things of that matter. This is interesting for what it is. Sometimes you need this, sometimes you don't, but there's an important extra facet to this and that regards the plugin host. Now, the plugin host is something that you may have heard us talking about in previous videos on the channel and in this series. What exactly is the plugin host? Way back in the murky, distant past, when Sublime Sex version 1 and 2 first came out, it was comprised of a single executable that was the core of the application, the parts that display the window and allow you to edit files and things of that nature, and the plugin runtime, the Python system that actually executes plugin code, all existed inside of one program. And of course, that works. The, those versions were around for some time, but they that does that have potential problems because we can see here Plugins can do anything they want that is Python related. As I mentioned uh, in a previous video, uh, my friend Keith Hall and I are working on a plugin that puts a piano inside of Sublime Text, so we're sending MIDI information through connected devices. There's nothing to stop us from doing that. We're just writing Python code, right? That's great for the freedom, but potentially unsafe because uh, an unsavory plugin or just unfortunate happenstance could cause the plugin system to hang or crash. And in previous versions of Sublime and Sublime 1 and 2, because the plugins were executed from the same core application, if that crashes, the whole program goes away and you lose work. In Sublime Text 3, one of the big changes they made was taking the plugin system and splitting it off into a separate executable named the plugin host. The plugin host is responsible for actually executing Python code. And now that it's its own separate program that's running off to the side, if something untoward happens in there, the plugin host will go away, but the core of Sublime will remain, and you can still save your work and recover, and you don't lose any work. You may have seen in the past, uh, potentially, a dialog box that will pop up if the plugin host gets canceled or killed for any reason, including crashing, telling you that the plugin host has been terminated, and as a result, plugins aren't going to work. And when that happens, most of the menu items in Sublime become uh, inactive because most the functionality in Sublime is actually defined by plugins that come in the packages that it ships with. Now, Sublime starts up the plugin host when it starts, and then it communicates with it from there. And there's this is the other important facet to the plugin life cycle here, and that is that with very few exceptions, none of the Sublime Text API is available to you until all of the plugins in the plugin host have finished loading. Only then will commands be able to be executed and things of that nature. So you have to be very careful about things that you might want to do that require access to the Sublime API. You can't do them at the top level like that hello statement on print four because your plugin won't work when Sublime is first started up. When Sublime starts and the plugin host starts, it's finding and loading all of the plugins, but not until it's found and loaded all of them will that actually work. That's why you might need to use plugin loaded to, if you need to access the API when things are started, that's how you would do that. The indication of this happening is appears in the console. If you were to scroll up after all the plugins are loaded, it actually displays a message that says plugins loaded.
Now, the plugin host is the place where the Python executables uh, live. It ships with Sublime. The version of Python that it uses is under the control of the Python authors. We're not allowed to modify that in any way. Only the developers of Sublime can do that. Although, as has been noted in previous videos in this little video series, as of the current time, as I'm recording this right now, there are development builds available for the next major release of Sublime, and that contains not one, but two different plugin hosts, so that there can be a version of Python for legacy packages and a newer version of Python for new packages that want to take advantage of it. So the same information still applies here. It's just that there's an extra plugin host. That's just sort of a little extra bonus fact for you. The business of loading and unloading plugins in the plugin lifecycle may seem complicated at first blush, but as we've just seen, it's really not that complicated at all. So plugins are loaded in Sublime when they're first created and after a modification has been detected in them or when the package that they're in is removed from the list of ignored packages and Sublime is loading the package. Similarly, plugins are removed from memory when a modification has been detected and Sublime is about to load it again, or when the package that it's contained in is added to the list of ignored packages and we need to unload that entire package. We can detect when those events are happening in our plugin, if we care, by using the module level plugin loaded and plugin unloaded methods, which are entirely optional. We only need to include those methods if we need to know when we're being loaded or unloaded, which we might need to do if we needed to load a configuration file at startup, for example, or if we took an action at startup that requires us to clean things up, like removing a file or getting rid of some memory we allocated when our plugin goes away, we can detect that as well. This is also very important to us because if we needed to access the Sublime Text API in any way while our plugin is starting, well, we can't do that in top level code. We can only do that once the plugin API is ready. The plugin an API isn't ready until Sublime invokes that particular method, and this has everything to do with how plugins are now executed in an external process outside of the Sublime Text core. That process needs to finish all of its loading and setup before the API becomes available. And in newer versions of Sublime, there's more than one of those that we can run inside of, depending on what version of Python we want to use, but we're going to cover that in a future video. So if we need to access the API at startup time, we need to use these methods. And speaking of that, in the next plugin 101 one video, we're going to start diving into some of the things we can do with the Sublime Text API by learning how we can determine what version of Sublime we're running in, what operating system we're on, and things of that nature. And if you'd like to know when that is uh, happening, use that button down below to subscribe and ring the bell notification icon so you don't miss a thing. You can always also leave questions, comments, requests for clarification, or topics that you want to make sure get covered in this video series down in the comments section below this video. Until the next plugin 101, this is Odat Nerd asking you to please have a sublime day.